Hello everybody, it's your pal Grishy Zuby here, and this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. The concept is to create an animation where each frame is in a different coloring style. You probably have seen the video done by Ben Mariotta, I think I'm saying it that correctly, who did the same thing. I tried doing this over a year ago, but ended up not doing it. It was then that I got reminded of this challenge from this video by Gox Art. Again, I hope that I'm saying that correctly and after watching it i decided i should go ahead and just go for it so first i was trying to decide what i should do and i quickly made this animation with my character leo but it wasn't very good and i wouldn't really work for this challenge so i decided to do instead to use my character yue with their hair flowing in the wind and also blinking with a tear coming down their face after I had sketched out the animation in Many Bang Pain and I put it together in Krita, I then decided which frames were going to be on um, which styles. When I exported it, I exported it as both a video and a series of pictures, so that way I could use them as sketches for each frames. Now, you might be wondering at this point how many frames I'll be doing. I'll be attempting to do 16 frames, however, the animation itself isn't technically 16 frames. When I was editing the frames in Krita, I was trying to figure out how I could make the animation look the best, but I wasn't looking how I wanted it to with just 16 frames. So I decided to hold each frame for an extra one so that way it looked smoother. I believe in animation, um, technical speak, this is known as animating in twos? or ones i'm not sure so hopefully i can be get forgiven for this sort of uh breaking of a rule but it is technically 16 frames it's just each one is going to be held out for an extra frame after doing all that it was time for the first frame also if you see me switching back and forth between files and later sections it's because i copied and pasted some things in order to make the drawing go faster since there were some parts that were pretty much the same as other frames I've, i have drawn before so yeah so the first frame is drawn in my style that i use for my normal comic work and it consists of using a slightly textured brush for the line work and using simple cell shading for shadows and highlights and using an airbrush for those shadows and highlights the irises are drawn on a single alpha lock or pixel lock layer and after i did all of that there was one thing i was still on the fence about doing at this point and that was whether i should add a background or not in the end i did actually decide to do this since it would be a way to convey the scene and the lighting in a more clear way however this would also mean that each frame would take a considerably longer amount of time since i also had to worry about the background um this is where that copy and paste method thing comes in the most because oh boy i'm not gonna draw all, all those backgrounds again uh with that that was the first frame and now, the second frame was done in my fully rendered style. This style has some similarities to my comic style, but maxed out to a lot. And this is the style I use in most of my artworks. I did this one in most of the frames in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, and first I used the Candela brush for the line art, and I'll use this sort of hatching shading above it. Then for the shading, I'll use the same sh cell shading technique and go over all of that with a watercolor brush. Then I'll use the airbrush and rough color watercolor brush. And for the highlights, I'll use the same brushes. Uh, for the eyes, I basically just make them super shiny. And I do this technique I've been doing for a long time where I add a ring of light over the pupil. I'll also use a multiple layer around the eye, but I do think I made the eyes a bit too bright here. Um, and that kind of uh, stumped me in some other frames, so I had to make them less bright than they are here. I also made a more complicated background as well by painting it, which is how I usually make my fully rendered backgrounds. Um, and yeah, then I'll create a multiply layer over the whole thing and add some extra glow. Then I wanted to try to create a manga style frame, so I attempted to color Yue in black and white first and try to do some screen tone shading. But for some reason, I didn't think of just pasting a screen tone thing or anything and i couldn't find any good screen tone brushes so i ended up trying to make textures and gradients by using these hatching brushes um i don't think it turned out bad i actually think it looks pretty good i just it doesn't look super manga like but oh well <laughs> i used the same brushes to run the background and i think that actually created a cool effect it's sort of like that effect where if you zoom in you see a bunch of like random scribbles and stuff but if you zoom out it looks like a full rendered thing so yeah for this frame i actually tried copying the style from this picture which is actually a picture of you eh? <laughs> and uh copy the style of the landscape 
landscape that they're painting, which I drew to purposely look different from my style. This turned out better in the background though, and it mainly just drew you in a softer look than my normal style. This did somehow make the grass look much brighter, um, but I probably just went a bit crazy with the texturing there. This frame was really fun because I got to use my favorite sunset colors. This meant that the lighting source had changed since it's the sun and placed lower in the sky. For a lot of this, I was able to get away with using a lot of what I did for my rendered frame and just adjusting the colors, but there were some things I had to repaint, but I don't mind that because I love working in these colors and, and it did feel good to render this one in my preferred color palette. US palette and the background I made for them are a bit different from the colors I would usually choose and I just like making sunsets. The background was also fun to create since I wanted the sun to look really sh like like it was really shining through the trees. As you can see, I did add in some stars but in the lower area of the sky to make it look like the night is coming in. For this frame, I went with a lineless style by blocking in all of the shapes and adding in some minimal shading. That sounds easy, but I always take a while to fill in the shapes when it comes to this style because when I trace over the sketch, I keep forgetting it's not line art and try to make my lines perfect only for it to be covered up when I fill it in. So yeah, um, and I have tried this style before. It's it's pretty simple as far as the shading goes. Uh, yeah, and I was pretty lazy with the background because I just added in the comic frame background but there's no line art, so it, it, it counts. <laughs> For this frame, I attempted to create a pop art look, and it's here that I actually used a screen tone which really should have been done in the manga frame. I used much more saturated colors which ended up making the whole thing lean more blue than teal which was interesting because literally all I did was uh, use the hue, saturation, and luminosity thing um, and br brightened up the saturation thing and somehow that made the whole thing look more blue than teal so yeah very interesting color theory thing i went with some simple cell shading and pasted some screen toes on top of that shading layer for some reason i also used a screen tone filter around the edges of ua's markings but it kind of created looks cool instead of the light and dark gradient i usually make for ua with an airbrush i used screen tones instead and i even added screen tones on the background sky gradient can you tell i went a little crazy with screen tones here i guess i was compensating for the lack of them in the manga um uh frame i also made this shadow silhouette thing that i use that, are, that i see in a lot of pop art um i really like how the colors turned out in this one and the screen tones were fun to use even though i should have used them in the manga frame and i kind of went a little crazy with them here but oh well <laughs> Thank you.
For this black and white frame, I used my normal rendering style except I stuck with black and white for everything except for the eyes. This is the exact same technique I used for this artwork from my music art video, and I ended up liking it a lot so I decided to make a frame in this style. I oddly like coloring it this way, even though I love color so much, so I might consider this as a step style or anything because I do actually have a fun time rendering everything in just black and white except for eyes or anything else of importance. Interestingly enough, I ran into the same problem as I did with that previous artwork uh, with not wanting to make the moon too bright where you can't see it, uh, but I eventually made it work out but I would, I'm gonna have to think about that if I want to try to do uh, this style again um, because it's twice that has happened now uh, yeah if I had a nickel for every time I was drawing in complete black and white and the lighting source ends up being too bright I would have two nickels which isn't a lot but it's weird that it happened twice yeah For this one, I drew it in a much more sketchy and messy way by using my homemade cloud pen and roughly adding in the liner. I also roughly added in the colors and shading with a paintbrush tool. And for the background, I also really roughly shaded in the grass and outlined the trees rather than shading them. Basically, I wanted the whole vibe for this frame to be rough and feel less clean. This inverted frame was super easy. I just used my rendered frame again and edited everything to match the sketch and inverted the picture, which looks pretty cursed, but that's the point. Now for the pixel frame, uh, this one I drew this whole thing with a pixel brush. I really like pixel art and I've ex been experimenting with it in the past. Uh, I do enjoy it, but I always have a hard time filling in the colors because when I use the fill tool, there's always like little dots outside the corners of the pixels and I'm not sure why that happens. I'll have to, to look back at that, maybe experiment more with how I color uh, my pixel art. But other than that, I really like making it and I do like how this turned out. Uh, for the background, I used the first one I made and used the mosaic filter to pixelate it because I didn't feel like just doing all of the background in a pixel brush. Um, so yeah. <laughs> This frame is titled green. Now you might be wondering what that means, uh, but it's just me being super lazy. I just copied my rendered style frame, edited their eyes again, uh, placed a green effect over the whole thing, and added some doppel light thingies. It's super lazy, I know, uh, but I was tired that day. <laughs> um, I, I kind of wish that I went like a little crazy with it, kind of make it look more like, like an old um, cartoon thing. Maybe I should have used my simple frame rather than my rendered frame and and brighted up the saturation. I don't know. I think I was just really tired and I, none of that really crossed my mind at the time. So yeah, please, uh, sorry. <laughs> For this frame, I wanted to make it look super inky and I like this one, but I do wish that I chose a different brush for the line art, especially because I do have a brush now that would have been super cool um, that I actually use for my sketches now, but oh well. I basically just wanted everything to look like it was drawn with an ink brush and I added in some brush strokes and ink blots, which were fun to add. I used only the marker tool for this frame again, another reference to the music art video where I drew this picture with just the marker brush, and I think this frame turned out alright, although I do think that I could have blended the shading a little more. I also tried doing a little swatching for the background, and I made some little dots for the stars.
For this frame, I wanted to make it look like it was a doodle I would make in my sketchbook, so I drew it all with a pencil brush and light shading with it as well. I really like this one and I like how the background looks as well despite it being pretty simple. The only thing I did different I wish I did was to make the background a darker color to really make it look like it was in a sketchbook, but I do like it turned out uh, nonetheless. And finally, for this last frame, I just used my watercolor brushes to create it. Not much to say since I just rendered UA with uh, my watercolor brushes. The background is a bit odd, but it, I was really tired and didn't want to repaint it. So I used uh, some filters to make it look more blurry and paint-like. I know it looks weird, it didn't really work, but uh, I was tired, it was the last frame, so yeah. And with that, I was finally done with this project. Uh, it, this took a lot longer than it, it took but the, oddly enough i think the video is going to be much shorter than i thought it would be um but yeah without further ado let me present the final piece This took a while to do, but I'm so glad that I finally did it. It was so fun to try to create this. I am not an animator in any sense. I mean, I do animate some things, but I, I'm not a professional animator or anything. Um, but this was a like a fun animation project thing to do. I probably won't do this again, but if you like this video, please feel free uh, to like it if you enjoy it. Um, you can check out my other videos where I do some similar stuff to this. Um, I'll be posting this GIF and other frames in my Instagram below. And as always, I have my comics on my webtoon and tapas. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!